In debate, you'll be face to face with IR motions, and they're quite hard to understand given the complexities around international conflicts and the numerous actors involved. It is easier to engage with these topics if you have case studies to help you. The goal of this video series is to focus on the current conflict in Sudan. We'll explore the history of the context of the region, the protests, and the consequences of this conflict. The example of Sudan can be relevant when debating actions that the international community can pursue in the face of a regime transition. Sudan is a unique case study about the effects of a toppled regime and the power vacuum that it left as a result. In the case of Sudan, this vacuum was filled by the military. The dictator of 30 years, al-Bashir, was toppled for a couple of reasons. First, he practiced radical Sharia law. Secondly, he persecuted minorities. Thirdly, he led the ethnic cleansing of Darfur. And last, he locked up political opponents. Military sources say it all started before dawn on Thursday morning. Al-Bashir was told by security chiefs that there was no alternative but to step down. Finally, this year, people protested. Through these protests, the public succeeded in overthrowing him because they sought a Sudan led by civilians. They wanted democracy. However, in its wake, a power vacuum was created and the Military Transitional Council, MTC, was eager to fill it by forcing their way into power. The Defense Minister and the head of the High Security Committee announced the uprooting of the previous regime and the detention of its leader in a secure place. I also announced the formation of a transitional military council that will manage the state for a two-year period. Now, Sudan is led by this military. Once again, people took to peaceful protests and that's when the military attacked, injuring over 160 people and killing over 100, arresting many. They shut down connection networks in many areas, blocking the internet. But how did this happen? General Hamiti, the deputy chairman of MTC, led the Darfur genocide in Sudan. He's a terribly violent leader. He has power because he's close with Saudi Arabia, when he supplied them child soldiers for the Yemen war. Focused on bilateral cooperation between the two sisterly countries, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates have promised $3 billion in aid to Sudan. Because of these reasons, Saudi Arabia is unwilling to take action against Sudan. It's not just Saudi Arabia that Hamiti has helped. The European Union's migrant crisis of 4 million displaced people led them to pay countries in Africa to redirect these migrants, including paying Hamiti to lead this border control. He forced these refugees from migrating and abused them. We are working hard to send those who did this to the gallows, anyone who has made a mistake or abused, by the grace of God. As explained, Hamiti is powerful and unwilling to back down. He said himself that he's against protests of any kind. As shown, Sudan's history is an example that you can apply to your debates, specifically the debate motions we showed you earlier. Moreover, Sudan is a complex situation with many moving parts and actors. As discussed, you have the EU that enabled power in the wrong hands. You have Saudi Arabia, that is complacent to the MTC's behavior. And you have the Sudan military that is trying to quell civilian rights. As a debater, applying these examples of different stakeholders will help broaden your perspective in a debate, instead of creating a case with only one viewpoint. The best way to tackle these topics is to open your mind and make claims that don't overgeneralize a situation. The goal is to instead address the intricacies within a crisis and then build the strongest arguments possible.